All I got is missed calls on my line, yeah. Never seen a pick up right on time, yeah. If I don't call back, leave me alone. Please leave a message at the tone. All I got is missed calls. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 129 of the Missed Call Podcast. This is Cub Wood, and as always, I'm here with Sauce Sartori. And we have a special guest to the special guest. Sauce, let the people know. We have a mascot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot. This uh, is Plum. He is going to be part of our show now. He's not going to do much, but he's here. Uh, Plum is up here at the top. You can't see him at all, but Plum is now here and he's here to stay. Um, fun fact is he's been here the entire time. Like he's been here for episodes and episodes, but I just got this light. So and now you're in the actually, dark. Yeah. Yeah. He's a nighttime fish. Nocturnal. But like I got him this light and now not only is he like happier synthesizing vitamin D, right? All the good stuff. He's also now visible in the show. Beforehand, the water was so dark that it just blended in with the blue. Also. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't forget also, to sign up. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Call Podcast. Call Podcast. For the people listening. Call Podcast. Yeah. And uh, support the brand, buy a hoodie so I can get a ring light because look at this lighting. Yes. Yes. Ring light would be nice for young cub. Uh, let's also remind everybody this is episode 129 and Brennan Davis will be on here in a little bit. But before we get to that, we got to hit you with some segments. Uh, the best things we saw, grinding our gears, all the good stuff is coming your way today. Uh, so let's get into it. Cupboard. We have some things to dive into. A lot of these actually kind of coincide with one another. Um, so let's start with what's grinding our gears. You want me to go first? Yes. Yeah, I, I would like you to because what's grinding my gears and your best thing of the week uh. is going to – be a perfect transition. A uh, little tease before the tease. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me tease you for it, please. I've All been right. told I'm a tease. I've been told I'm a giver. I didn't like that. I'm, I didn't I, like that. Oh, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't. Um, what's great about yours is the praise Tom Brady's been getting for taking the Bucks to the playoffs since the first time since, what, 07 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then Belichick's, like, getting slandered for not making the playoffs after so-and-so. But there's – but – he had to bring in – or first of all, let's just go to Tom real quick. Okay. Tom has – Tom came into a team that had a great defense that just needed a competent offense. On top of that, they just gave him weapons upon weapons upon weapons. And then you look at the Patriots. They're missing defensive players because they opted out, good defensive right. players. And then there were the quarterback who's coming off an injury, Cam Newton, and they have no wide receivers. They have no players. So in reality, I don't think we should be slandering Bill whatsoever or giving Tom Brady praise because, if anything, Tom has had the easier season. Yeah, it, well, it really is an interesting juxtaposition when you put the two teams next to one another, right? The Patriots understandably struggled this year. Like, I think it also kind of shows you how good Tom Brady is, right? And I know this is probably going to grind your gears, but it, it does kind of show you, like, Tom Brady is very good. Even, what is he, 45 now? 78. Whatever, however old he is, right? So let's think last year he was, let's say, 44. I don't know how old Tom Brady he's, is. I think he's 44 or 43 right now. Regardless. Yeah. Um, you know, Tom Brady at 43 is still very good, and – you know, that, that shows because the Patriots were dog shit this year. Of course, they were without big-time defensive players. I think one of those guys that sat out for them was Stephon Gilmore, who's one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, right? Um, and so they were going to struggle. Cam Newton, it looks like his arm hurts. But I think, interestingly enough, the praise that he is getting is a little I, – I won't say odd, but it's, it's definitely not, like, praiseworthy, right? Like, you have – Chris Godwin, you have Mike Evans, you have your old buddy Gronk, you've got Antonio Brown, the list goes on and on. The running back situation down there has been good with Ronald Jones, even though he's been injured as of late. Um, and, and the line really isn't that bad for him either. 
you pair that up with a, a defense that's number one at stopping the run and you've got a playoff team, right? And you've got a pretty good playoff team. If anything, I would say the Buccaneers have underperformed this year. Thank you for, and thank you for agreeing with me. Also people forget they have one of the best offensive lines mm-hmm. in the league because of Ted Larson. People forget that. That is very true. Yeah. He brings a lot of morale to the room. Does Ted Larson when he's in there at morale. Um, I, I do want to take this time to also say, we don't think Tom Brady is a bad quarterback. We don't think he is a bad player. Please don't like somehow take that away from this. You don't think Tom Brady's bad. I just hate Tom Brady, which is very different than thinking he's bad. I, no. I hate Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers is awesome. The goat. Right. One of them. Anyway, uh, we're not saying Tom Brady's bad. We're just no. saying the praise. Maybe I'm just is saying. I'm just saying. I should worthy. not. I should not be seeing ESPN doing you up texts for Tom Brady when it's in its build. Like that's stupid. That's so dumb. It's so dumb. Aspen definitely has their guys that they root for, right? Uh, you think uh, like LeBron James is to uh, Bleacher Report what Tom Brady is to ESPN? You know? No, Bleacher Report with emojis. <laughs> Bleacher Report loves a good fucking emoji, man. Let me tell you. Um, okay, I'm gonna move into what's grinding my gears. Uh, and again, this is going to coincide with what's the best thing you saw this week. Um, I've got more my morale sweater on today because shout out to former guest Dom Frederick. He's been working his ass off this week after uh, the trade the Cubs pulled off a few days ago. You Darvish and Victor Caratini going to the Padres essentially for Zach Davies and four very young prospects. None of the four are older than 20 years old. None of them are expected to see big league time until at least 2024. And it's got a lot of Cubs fans up in arms, right? Now, here's the thing. What's grinding my gears is not the trade itself. You Darvish is going to be 35 years old. I totally get Seeing him in the back half of his contract, he just performed maybe to the best that he will on this contract. So why not try to flip him and get something to restock what is a a brutal farm system at the moment, right? But what I do have a problem with is the way that the Cubs are setting this up in that they're crying broke. Cub, you live a mile away from the stadium. Yep. We know this, right? Yeah. You could take a walk down there five years ago and today, and it is a vastly different area because this is booming. Business is booming for the Chicago Cubs. Let me walk you through a couple of things. And, and maybe you saw me tweet it out. Uh, but actually, actually I could help you with this one since I know like, front office i know some part of part of their front office marketing tactics to get people to go so like just to give an example of like what they're trying to do for like ballpark experience you can chill out outside the building yeah you can can chill out you can get you don't even have to go to the game and still get the the perceived value of being in wrigleyville has increased yeah but let 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 me just walk through this real quick right the cubs are crying broke we have to get rid of you darvish at least that's how they set it up before the trade was done they're crying broke but they've created a TV network. Right Wrigley was street. named, right? Wrigley was <laughs> named a historical landmark, which has given them tax breaks. The city of Chicago gave the Cubs a tax reprieve. They've spent billions renovating Wrigley and the areas around Wrigley. And uh, uh, ticket prices are amongst the highest in baseball. There's no such thing as a cheap ticket anymore for Chicago Cubs games. What, what, pisses me off is the way that they set this trade up and that you're going to try to somehow sell to fans, help us. We're broke because COVID really screwed us. Right. I call bullshit. I call bullshit all day long. You're the goddamn Chicago Cubs, dude. Even, even if they didn't have this success in the last six, seven years, whatever they sell out almost every game. They're America's team for baseball. If you, Right. I think so too. If you, if you are so down because of last year's season that you can't afford you Darvish, right? What they did was a salary dump. They got Zach Davies to replace 
Darvish in the starting rotation. And they got four guys that they won't have to pay really anything for four years. It's a salary dump. So you're going to tell me now Jed Hoyer's coming to us and telling us, hey, we're going to be a competitive team in 2021. Right? We're going to compete in the NL Central. Us? <laughs> but you're going to pawn off people's player, like uh, favorite players, right? You Darvish was a fan favorite, is still a fan favorite. I know plenty of Chicago fans will still be rooting for you when he is playing and pitching in San Diego. Slam Diego. And then, I mean, I mean, I don't even think it was 24 hours afterwards. They're talking about Wilson Contreras being on the trade market now too. Jed Hoyer did an interview tonight and said that that is completely fictional. And I'll wrap up my, what's grinding my gears with this statement, right? When Theo Epstein was in charge of the Cubs, he was a very transparent leader. He let you know what was happening. If we weren't going to spend in the offseason, he'd let you know we're not going to spend much this offseason. If we're looking to trade somebody, he'd be open and say, yeah, we're, we're probably looking to shop that guy. So Jed Hoyer calling these Wilson Contreras trade rumors in the wake of the U Darvish thing, calling it fictional. This is an opportunity now, Jed, to be transparent, just like Theo was. I hope that consistency is there because the Cubs fans deserve it, especially after this and calling it a fucking uh, a, a salary dump. So what's grinding my gears is the way the Cubs <laughs> set up this trade. Now, the best thing I saw... Right. Is the Padres. It's, <laughs> it's the Padres. Now, yeah. I, I mean this to not disrespect the Cubs whatsoever. And this isn't me stabbing Cubs fans like, oh, <laughs> this isn't me poking the bear. <laughs> no. I thought you were the bear. I, I, I am. There is no other bear in this world outside of myself and the wilderness bears. Those are my family members. Okay. Yeah. The person behind you, Sauce, my family member. That's my cousin. Okay. That's Cubbert Sr. Got it. Uh, the Padres. The Padres have not been good our entire lives. They have not been good. I'm trying to think of another team outside of the Mariners that have not been good our entire lives. I have been dying. Or in the Nationals. The Nationals just got good. I've been dying for them to be good my entire life. I hate like, in all sports, like how it's like, oh, they're just gonna always going to be terrible. They're always going to be terrible. They're never going to turn it around. I hate that. But these Slam Diego Padres are turning it around, Sauce. These, yeah, this, yeah. They're, they're, one of the most, they're one of the most potentially the most exciting team to watch in baseball. And it is going to be unbelievable baseball. Unbelievable. They have yeah. an unbelievable pitching rotation. Clevenger, you Darvish. I'm missing one more. Who am I missing? Oh, well, Blake Snell, Blake Snell. Right. Which the uh, 24 hours before the Padres acquired you Darvish, they go out and get Blake Snell for Luis Patino and a couple other guys. Luis Patino is a, a great pitching prospect, by the way. But let's put in perspective for just a minute, Cub. Like, yes, this year they're not going to have Mike Clevenger because of Tommy John surgery. But still, they're going to have Darvish. They're going to have Snell. They're going to have uh, Mackenzie Gore, one of the – one of the league's best pitching prospects. Uh, Denilson Lamette had a breakout season last year, finished fourth in NL Cy Young voting. And they also have Chris Paddock, who, while he did regress last year, can take a step forward Sophomore next year slump. and be a Sophomore really slump. solid number five. Exactly. Now, moving into 2022, they will have all of that that I just mentioned in addition to Mike Clevenger, and they'll have that for two years. So 2022, 2023, they might have one of the best starting rotations for the next three seasons. And if the ascension of Fernando Tatis Jr. continues, if uh, Machado doesn't show any signs of slowing down and also the progressions of other guys on that team, I think of Trent Grisham, uh, Tommy Pham, et cetera, they have a lot of guys there that it's it's going to be really fun. And I think, honestly, they could start to put up a fight with the Dodgers here in the NL West very soon, they're, as soon as next year. They're plus 900 odds to win the World Series now. Which I like. I, don't, I, I still don't think that they have everything it takes to take the Dodgers out in a best-of-seven NLCS. I think they need to work on their bullpen a bit. 
but they are very close to being an extremely dangerous team. Also, to the Tommy Pham diehards out there, just know he's probably never coming on the podcast because I talked to him on his Instagram live one time, and he said, I'm not a talker. What's up? Ah. ah, not a talker. Okay. Got it. But you're on Instagram well, and you, live. And you think, they, you think like the Dodgers, or rather the Padres also pulled off both of these trades without giving up anything off of their major league roster? All right, cool. first car of the episode. Um, <laughs> uh, but they gave up almost nothing off the major league roster, really nothing except for Zach Davies. And they're going to keep Cronenworth and Will Myers, who had a great year last year. Love and, Will Myers. No and gloves. Aaron Nola. Uh, it, it's it's going to be really, really fun for them uh, over there on the West Coast. But let's move on. Let's, get, let's not get stuck here. Uh, the best thing that – I saw this week is actually something I'm hoping to see, right? We're putting it in future tense instead of past tense. I'm hoping that the best thing I see this week is a bears win. The bears win and they're in, they're fighting for their playoff lives. They hold their own destiny in their hands. And on top of that, it's fucking Packers week, baby. Let's go. I wish you would have done that in a Sergio dip voice. Like, and there he is, no, no, no. having the time of his life. <laughs> and there are the bears. Wait, what did you? <laughs> Hold on, I had it in the beginning. What did you say in the beginning? You're like the bears. Ah, whatever. I ruined it. It's okay. It's okay. I had it. Put that microphone back. Let's talk about the bears this week. And Cub, what do you think it takes from the Chicago Bears to? Take out the Packers, who have been one of the best teams in the NFL, certainly the best team in the NFC this year. They haven't mentioned Aaron Rodgers sitting out this week, have they? Well, Aaron Rodgers won't be sitting out because there are still three options for what can happen with the number one seed in the NFC. The Packers can clinch it with the win. If the Packers lose and the Saints win, the Saints would clinch it. If both teams lose that I've just mentioned and then the Seahawks win, the Seahawks would clinch the number one seed. I'm fairly certain that's how it would shake out. Okay. So, so they won't be – it'll be full-strength Packers. Yes. Hopefully full-strength Bears, depending on what happens with Jalen Johnson. Uh, they, but Bears could be getting back Bobby Massey this week as well. Uh, it's going to be really, really just, uh, I think a dog fight of a game. I don't think the bears are going to roll over and show their bellies this game. I think that we're going to see a legit bears team on Sunday. I'm praying we do. This might age terribly. This This, could age. This could age like milk. You want me to add on to it? You want me to add on to it? Cause I got some hot shit coming out. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So the city of broad shoulders is prepared for this game. We're all for it. We all know that. But I have a hot take, and I don't know if it's going to sit well with anybody because my brain put this together. I think the Packers may be one of the frauds in the NFL right now that no one has ever exposed. It. And they won't get exposed until the playoffs because their, their schedule has been so weak, so weak that they look so good. I'm not saying they're a bad team. I'm not saying they're not a bad team. Their offense is explosive, ah, but I think they're frauds. This is a squ- it's exquisite, sir. This is, I this think is, they're frauds. This and- may, be, may be one of the best takes you've ever had. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> um, if, if you're a Bears fan, you're going to fucking run into a brick wall after this. They played the losing season Bears earlier in the season. Yes. They're playing the full throttle Maserati Mitch fucking yes. Bears this week. Yes. Baby. They're going to fuck keep coming keep coming mm. anything more mm, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> the one thing the one thing that i'll say i think i think mitch has performed very well yes you can you are guaranteed back, one interception per game uh, and it's going to be fucking awful but if you can get around that and it doesn't come in a crucial time like i hope the first drive of the game mitch comes out and just throws a what the fuck interception because then we know the rest of the game it's not going to happen <laughs> you know if, what he should i do? mean if we get if we get to the fourth quarter and we haven't seen the bad pick and it's like a one possession game we're like when's it coming when's it going to happen <laughs> you know what he should do literally first play of the game underhands it to somebody Zadarius, and he just shovel passes to Zadarius smith okay Real talk, 
the Bears haven't played tremendous defensive talent the past four weeks. I'm well aware of it. I think you're well aware of it. But the Bears have also scored more points against those awful defenses than a majority of their opponents. I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking the Saints, the Chiefs, the the Packers. When those teams have played the aforementioned four teams the Bears have beaten, They've beaten them by less. The Bears scored more points and beat them by more than some of those top teams, right? Which is what you want to do. I think this Bears team is firing on all cylinders. The Packers are, I think, pretty weak against the run. If they can get Montgomery going on the ground, if they can keep things simple for Mitch, uh, you know, rolling out, doing bootlegs, certainly the Packers are going to be game planning for that. So Mitch is probably going to have to be a little bit better out of the pocket this week, but it's not all on the offense either. I'll say real quick, and then we'll move on that. The defense is, has to, has to show up in a big way. If Jalen Johnson doesn't play, that's going to be an absolute kick in the dick. But I think the most pressure is going to be on Chuck Pagano, who you know, Chuck Pagano recently hasn't been calling great games on the defensive side of the ball. This soft zone, allow things to happen underneath, but don't break over the top. That whole thing that he's been doing really has not been working. And if you give Aaron Rodgers an opportunity to throw against a three-man rush, four-man rush, et cetera, he's going to tear you apart. Don't give Rodgers time. Blitz, 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 blitz. Because that defensive line is strong enough to stop either one of those running backs that they have. I don't give a fuck about A.J. Dillon's quads. I don't give a fuck about Aaron Jones. I don't give a fuck about about, anything about that. Blitz, 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 and use Roquan, who's an absolute missile and a weapon. Pro Bowler Roquan Smith. Should be Pro Bowler Roquan Smith, yes. I just have one thing to add, Sauce. How about the Bears? How about them bears? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Random, random thought. Random thought. Yes, you you do have a random thought. Let's get to that. What are your goals for the old Miss Call podcast for 2021? Okay, um, that's that's uh an interesting thought process. Um, well, I think number one, um, obviously is growth, right? Like that's the most generic thing that I think both of us can say is is just growth in consumption in following on social media, et cetera. Uh, that's the number one thing. And, and certainly our partnership with Boston media, uh, is important as well in doing that. You know, we are presented by Boston media. We should mention that. I don't know if we did that at the top of the show, but you know, our partnership that way is important too. Uh, and, and we all need to be pulling our weight either way. Uh, and I think that growth is on the horizon. The other thing that I want to do, and I think it's a lot more fun than just saying like, oh, we want to see numbers go up, is I am very excited about some of the conversations you and I have both been having about additional merchandise uh, that we'd like to start putting out there. I probably stole yours, but I'll let you expound, no, I'll let no, you expound no, no. on it a little bit um, instead of me rambling on about it. No, so go no, ahead. No, no, no. You didn't steal nothing. This is, this is a group project. If you said it, I said it. Yeah. There's okay. Any, any, well, be a- careful. <laughs> <laughs> I've said some choice things on this podcast. You've said some dumb things on this podcast. <laughs> hey, uh, so be careful. <laughs> no, like when sauce mentions merch that we're contemplating dropping, let it's me just- fire. Like I can't even front. It's, it's going to be fucking cool. No, like people, pe- the people who have purchased hoodies and like we, we, keep preaching you know the comfiest things anyone's ever worn those we didn't tell those people to say hey mention they're comfy these yeah, people we, are doing it themselves we are mm-hmm. going to continue to drop affordable good high quality clothing from yeah. the greatest city on god's green mother effing earth we are not a chicago podcast but we will freaking die for this town this beautiful the best summer city ever. Now, this isn't even about the podcast. The podcast, dude, we are growing at a fast rate. <laughs> we, are, we are growing. We are going to the stratospheres and beyond sauce. I don't care. There's no horizon. We already fucking passed it, buddy. We're going to get your fucking 
fucking face. <laughs> I, I don't I can't tell if you're having a fucking aneurysm or if this is just a fever dream or if you're in a state of mania. I can't really tell what's happening. I've recently been diagnosed. I I I too am excited for the things that we have in store for the year 2021. Definitely big things coming. Um, I think people can kind of sense the trajectory of of what we're doing. Um, it is going up, and I, it, I just want to that say- is important to know. And it's not us tooting our horn. It's you know, it's it's real things. It's palpable things, and and then and, and that Fuck is that. important for us to share with you. Fuck that sauce. We can toot our own fucking horns. We work our asses off to give the people quality content and quality yeah. clothing. And I just want to say, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, 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 I was just gonna say, if if people could enter into my mind and the way that I try to work through all of our segments, and does this work? Does that work? How can we make this better? How can we do that? How can I be better, right? If people could enter my mind and like really truly comprehend all the different things that I do just in this big forehead of mine. Uh, that I, I, I do people, verbally, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> people would get lost in that little, that, well, I shouldn't say little, but people would get lost in this, this brain of mine. No, I, I, big shoes to fill, but I'm going to say it. I don't give a shit. March 2020 and April 2020. Or 2021, sorry, forgot, New Year. April and March of 2021. They're going to be fucking huge. All right, now back away from the microphone because that makes me uncomfortable, but yes. And this is our ASMR edition of the Miss Back away from the microphone. (laughs) But it's going to be fun. It's going to be a huge year for us. We're very excited. And for those of you who have been along for the ride in 2020, we love you. We appreciate you. We can't tell you how much it means to have uh, loyal supporters. Uh, if you if you were somebody who purchased a hoodie or intend to do that, we fucking love you even more. Uh, and, but and if you didn't like hey, the hoodies, if you're like, hey, I didn't like black, well, just guess what? We got some in the world. Just keep, just keep riding with us because we're going to keep grinding. And always, if you guys have any suggestions, anything that you would like us to start doing or start covering, you can always – Follow us right here at Call Podcast. DM us, and we're we are open-minded people. Uh, but let's jump. Uh, this is this is going really really long, but it is also like a year-ending podcast, so uh, it is important. Uh, this is going really long, but let's go to thoughts and prayers. Uh, wait, can I do like this? Is this like uh, Lil Wayne? Can you hear this? Yeah, I heard it the first time. It was like perfect okay timing. Okay, wonderful. Um, candle is lit. And um, thoughts and prayers this week go out to Dwayne Haskins. Wait, is he still at the strip club? Uh, well, let's talk about it, right? Because Dwayne Haskins is a very interesting case. Uh, I got to remember to keep the candle up. Uh, Dwayne Haskins is a very interesting case because he's somebody who wanted the fame but did not necessarily – want to do the things that are required of somebody to be successful at the job. Does that make sense? And normally I would, I would say like, Oh, this guy's a fucking clown. He didn't deserve it. He didn't want it, whatever. Right. But I do think that there are some thoughts, uh, maybe some prayers that should be given to Dwayne Haskins because this guy really is a kid. You know what I mean? Like he's not, he's he's, our age. Right. Like, can, could you imagine being entrusted with being the franchise quarterback for a historic team like the Washington franchise? The Washington <laughs> football franchise. A historical football team, the Washington football team. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised he, he, he lasted past uh, a week past the, the strip club incident because if you're unfamiliar, I mean, uh, it's not alleged. He was – Dwayne Haskins violated – COVID protocols, NFL COVID protocols, went to a strip club and maskless. maskless and then, you know, played the next week. Didn't test positive for coronavirus, so he was able to play, didn't play well. And then uh, this past week was benched in the middle of the game for some dude who hasn't started a game in five he's, years. He's from the XFL. Right, exactly. You know, I feel I, I feel bad for Dwayne Haskins. Don't get me wrong, I do. I and I, I can't imagine the amount of stress and all of that that goes on being an NFL quarterback and somebody taken so high in the draft. But also, 
it's 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 almost like a cautionary tale that tells you like you know you can want the fame and the fortune but you have to do the work and to get up, there and, and back up that and, talk. and to continue to be there and back up that right talk. well like because he tweeted out those other teams that were going to gr- regret not drafting me that was my next thing i was going to say is like you know the 14 teams that passed on me are going to regret not taking me i don't think anybody's regretting not drafting you dwayne um, so thoughts and prayers, Dwayne Haskins. We can, I, if you have anything additional to say on this, shoot yeah. a shot. Do you remember when Cubs, sorry, not Cubs, Bears Twitter wanted Dwayne Haskins? Do you remember that? No. Yes, yeah, I do. don't. We talked about it on the podcast. Yes, you do. No. So I tweeted it. I I was like, wow, Bears Twitter is pretty quiet. What happened to you guys saying you wanted him? And Bears Twitter just attacked me. We we never said we wanted him. That wasn't us. I'll speak on the behalf of the Chicago Bears fan base. We don't want him. Shut up. Sh- moving on. Struggle bus. Struggle seance. Bus. Seance over. Blow it out. There. I, that's my favorite smell, by the way. Burnt. Burnt uh, wick. Blo- no, blown out candle. Just that smell. Um, Ugh, struggle fuck? bus. Struggle bus. New Year's Eve is tomorrow, and the boys. Yeah, this is sad. I just put it together. You can't go to Lake Geneva. Nope. I'm not going to Lake Geneva. Big sad. I could. But somebody not. didn't want but somebody couldn't doesn't want to go anymore because of COVID. Someone had to go. So someone uh, but this is for all the boys out there. All the boys out there in the whole world. If you're not getting together with your boys on New Year's, just know I'll be thinking about you. A boy of the boys. We'll be thinking about you on your lonely New Year's Eve while I'll be sipping $9 wine while I watch By football. yourself? By myself. Yikes. Fuzzy slippers on. Worries out. Well, <laughs> and I would assume boy of the boys would be like <laughs> man of the people, correct? Hey. Okay. Guy of the guys. Is that what that was? Is that what that was? It was just me Boy of the funny. boys is like man of the people. It was, just, it was just me trying to add words to words. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I know that that is attrition for you, so I feel badly that you cannot go. Uh, but struggle bus for me has to be my interview skills, and you'll see uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you'll see did here. I, did you write that down? Oh, you I did. did. <laughs> I did. And you'll see here. You'll see here in just a few minutes when we start our interview with Brennan Davis. Um, I had a, a weak moment. Uh, I got very excited that we were interviewing somebody uh, of of Brennan's stature, if you will, and and uh, with the team that he's involved with. I got a little overexcited, and I I'll come out and say it like hand up. This one's on me. I fanboyed. I fanboyed really hard it's a lesson learned it won't happen again so um enjoy the interview i welcome criticism it's how we get better uh and also know from the deepest part of my heart i am so fucking sorry i i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing at the fact that you put that on your struggle bus and are just owning up to it when we could just sit here and talk about me all day long but (laughs) Listen, so listen, listen. When I when I'm wrong, I am willing to throw my hand up quick. Like, yeah, that wasn't great. And and the interview is I think the interview overall is good. We we had good conversations with him, but you can hear that there is a distinct difference in the way that I'm talking to him uh, versus other guests. So You're like that guy I'm that sorry. the Cubs. <laughs> yeah it was it was i wouldn't say cringy but it was borderline cringe uh, at times um but vibes, yeah vibes were off i'm on the struggle bus now fake taxi something yes. that is great something that is great someone who is great frank gore possibly playing played his last game this past sunday he's opted out or op, he's injured he's not playing on sunday he is out this man's been playing since 2005. So I was drafted in 2005. He's the last of a dying breed. No fact checking. He is the last skilled position player from that draft. He is the last skilled position player from our childhood. Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson was drafted in 08. Will you do me a favor? Hmm. Can you put your phone on silent? Oh, is it going off? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, 
but no, I think Adrian Peterson is one of them. Uh, <laughs> Look at my but, phone. I didn't even know what's going yeah, on. <laughs> yeah. I chucked it. Um, no, dude, big ball Frank, man. Flopping yeah. all over the field. He's number one all-time games for running back, third all-time rushing, and he's had, I think, 9,000-yard rushing seasons. The biggest game I remember of Frank Gore's career – is when after his mom died, he had like three touchdowns and like had an unbelievable game. Or was his father? It was some mother, mom or dad died. I remember that. Since this is your fake taxi, I'll ask you and then we'll move on to mine and then Tinder bios. Um, Frank or Hall of Famer, yes or no? First ballot. Okay. No question. I know, I know that there's a lot of people that <clears throat> don't think so. So, no question. Uh, if you have longevity at the running back position like Frank Gore, and you stayed consistently starting on a roster like that. Come on. Yeah. Uh, my fake taxi is quick. Uh, Colin Sexton and Darius Garland, the dynamic duo right now for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, somebody, I might have even been the Cavaliers the other day, tweeted out a question of what are we going to call this duo, right? Like Clay and Steph for the Splash Brothers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what are we going to call this duo? And Larry Nance Jr. came up with the perfect nickname for the two of them, which is Sexland. Who doesn't want Darius, to be Sexland? Uh, Colin Sexton and Darius Garland are Sexland together. And I, that is the epitome of fake taxi. fake taxi. Yes, most definitely. Oh, before, um, so before, mine was quick. Before we move on, it's quick. Two seconds. Thoughts and prayers to the Bucks. The Knicks murdered them. Murdered them. You good? We're good. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's do let's do Tinder bios real quick. Uh, again, this is our I think our third episode now of doing a new format where I read said bios to Young Cubbert and he fields these advances almost as a shark from Shark Tank. Uh, we've got three ladies today, Kayla, Lane, and Mary, and we're going to dive into all three. Let's go with Kayla first, who is a makeup artist, and this is her bio. Three words. Call her daddy. I'm 23, by the way. Yes, I'm mixed. Yes, I'm 5'11 and a half, and yes, I got an attitude. If you're feeling generous, here's my Venmo. Do with all of that as you will. She sounds like a headache. Mm -hmm. Right? Call but this is this is the floor is yours, Cupboard. Call her daddy. Your Venmo is in your Tinder bio. Why would I send you money? What have you done? True. Why would I, why would I even take you out? You just well, Big me. Cat, Big Cat did Venmo you fifty cents one time. No, I Venmoed Big Cat twenty five cents to follow me on Twitter. Then I met him and I yelled at him. I said, "Hey, how come I Venmoed you a quarter and you didn't follow me back?" And he goes, "Huh?" I'm like, "I Venmoed you a quarter to follow me on Twitter and I put my at and everything." He goes, "Well, my bookie has it now and you're not getting a follow." I was like, "Okay, Big Cat." My bookie has it. <laughs> That's what he said. That's great. Uh, she can get out of here. She's, she's out the door. She's not even okay. Uh, Kayla with the uh, big X, uh, 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 cover giving excuse, her, the, excuse me, the Des Bryant, if you will. Uh, next up is lane who is 27. Uh, lane says, hi, I'm only interested in guys who are chill. Also just wanting to give oral. All right. So you should like getting that. Uh, not looking to date, and I only hang at my place. Have a boyfriend, so I got to play by the rules. Also, I'm not going to share social media. Keep it simple, safe, no drama, blow and go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she has a boyfriend, but she has to play by the rules. Can I suck your dick? Hey, hey, rule number one of rules. I like a gal who doesn't play by the rules. Number one, dick sucks ain't cheating. Hey, flirting ain't cheating. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Dick sucks ain't cheating, my man. 
Uh, okay. What a, what a so, wild child. Let's go. So with hold that. on, hold on for just a second. Cause I, I'm going to ask you to hold on to lane mm-hmm. for just a second because we've already eliminated Kayla. So now I bring you Mary who is 32 and her profile picture is a picture of her ass. Yeah. Uh, Mary's 32. And here's what she has to say. The idea of sharing a picture of my face online for everyone to see makes me feel uncomfortable but I will send you a picture if we vibe. I'm not in any kind of relationship or have anything else to hide, just a more private person. If that still makes sense in this time and age, LOL, I chose this pic because if I have none, no one will talk to me. I thought this one was quite catchy. There were no grammatical marks in that biography just so we're all on the same page like not a comma uh, i take that back there was one exclamation mark that was it oh uh, but when i do it but when i put commas and exclamation point, well, uh, i'm kidding okay so uh, we have lane and mary uh mary one, Ma- mary one who essentially it. says one who essentially says dick sucks ain't cheating and the other basically saying i might be ugly but i have a fat ass cub i will let you do with this as you will. I will sit back and I'll actually, I'll hang up and listen. Like Mary, none of that made sense. None of that made sense. Like, you know, it's weird that your face isn't on there. You know, that strikes as the kids would call phony catfish. Something smells fishy. Um, you'd sound nuts. And then adding the booty pick. Like, if, if you're going to do that and you want to be, I don't know, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, like, you want to do it respectfully to yourself and give yourself some more dignity than just putting your butt there. Not I don't know what it looks like off the dome, even though I sent it to you. <laughs> this is your guitar solo. I am not going to answer anything. This is all you. This is your I know, guitar I solo. Um, put, like, a dog. Put, like, something that has nothing to do with, like, you if you're not gonna show you like you're weird you you are a weirdo you are weird okay you're a weirdo. so so mary's weird lane of course we we've said a couple times uh will suck your dick uh but she I've does already, have a. have already got lane's address oh no, not, not does she kidding. live on drury lane mm-hmm. <laughs> the gum drop they're gonna okay. come drop buttons. Okay, so from what I'm hearing, Kayla is out. Mary is out. I have to pick We're Lane. We're left with Lane. But Lane's a cheater. I don't like cheaters. Well, no. Uh, again, dick sucks ain't cheating, cub. Oh, then sw- we'll super like her. Swipe up. Perfect. Swipe okay, up. so can we say that you're picking Lane? Lane, stay in your lane and I'll meet you there. We've got a deal. Wonderful, tremendous, awesome. Again, if you have if you have Tinder bios that you come across on your expeditions to uh, maybe get said dick suck or other things, maybe just companionship on your journey through Tinder. If you see some just crazy shit, please don't be afraid. Send it to either one of our uh, DMs on Instagram or to the call podcast DMs. We would love to read what you have for Cub. Um, but yeah, Cub's going home with Lane. So congratulations, Cub. I have to uh, go to we'll, her house. I have to go to her house. Right, she right. She, her she only hangs. At, she only chills at her place. But that's going to do it for the segment portion of the show. We're going to transition into the interview now with Brennan Davis, Cub's number two overall prospect. Uh, great interview. Again, I'm so sorry for all of the atrocities that I put forward in that interview. Uh, I lost sleep that night. Like I literally lost, I would say two hours of sleep that night, just thinking about how fucking dumb I was. So you did? hand up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But let's get to it. <laughs> let's get to it. Here's Brennan Davis. And now welcoming on number two prospect for the Chicago Cubs, Brennan Davis. Brennan, thank you so much for stopping by to talk with us today. Of course, man. Thanks for having me on. We're very, very excited to have you. This is uh, huge for us. Now, we obviously introduce you as the number two overall prospect for the Cubs, but what do you have to do to uh, beat up on Braylon a little bit to get that number one spot? 
I mean, he's a, <laughs> he's a good player. So, I mean, hopefully he just goes up and I'm shortly after him. There you go. Well, yeah. I mean, if you can't, <laughs> if you can't beat them, hope that they get bumped up to the major league roster and lose their prospect status. Um, so we wanted to start and really our, our interviews are much more longitudinal, right? They, they, they tend to span over your entire career. Um, and so maybe a good place to start might be uh, with the draft. And we're always so curious to know about uh, draft stories and what happened uh, behind the scenes. And if you're willing to share, we'd love to know what happened during your draft night or draft afternoon. It's really hard to tell with the MLB uh, and how that, how, how that happened for you. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the draft is crazy. Anybody you talk to will tell you that. Uh, I mean, I had went to a pre-draft workout at Wrigley Field for the Cubs before, beforehand. So, I mean, I had an idea that they were pretty interested. I played pretty well. But, like, going up to draft day, nobody ever is like, hey, like, unless you're going to be, like, a top 10 pick, they're like, hey, we'll give you this, this, like, days in advance. But after that, they're – it's kind of like game time decisions and you never really know what's going to happen. I didn't even really have an idea I was going to be a first day guy. So, like – there was a part of me that didn't even want to watch the draft because I was like, ah. But I had some guys that were going to go ahead of me that I was friends with that I wanted to support and uh, see their names pop up on the TV. So I ended up watching it, and I got a call probably four or five rounds before the Cubs had pick 62, and they're like, hey, like, we're really interested at pick 62. Would you take this to sign? And I talked to my mom and my advisor at the time and we were like yeah I would I would I would love to be Chicago Cubs so I mean going from not expecting anything to being picked middle to late of the second round is awesome just to be be able to go on day one was awesome yeah we love hearing that story of like yeah they, they called me and they were like what's the, you know we're gonna give you this and this and that and you know that yeah. that's that's always a really fun unique story because everybody's story is unique with it. it it might end up like oh yeah and they, and then they picked me but everything leading up to that moment is so much different yeah and then he picked me <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that i'm really excited about that mlb is doing is they've created the mlb draft league and i don't know how well you know this yet uh, but to fill everybody in, it's essentially going to be like a wooden bat league that they're doing uh, at the same time as the MLB season. And it's going to be for draft eligible players to kind of show up and show out. Uh, and essentially, it's going to be like a 60 game showcase season. Um, the wooden bat thing is really interesting to me because I know that summer ball usually is more important in terms of scouting. Um, do you have any thoughts on how this could possibly shape up future drafts? Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of high school guys are picked off projectability to really put them up against competition like this. So probably like some guys are going to get exposed because some guys are polished coming out of high school and some guys are just toolsy. So, I mean, that's going to be tough because it's going to be the best of the best and you're going to want to perform every day. So, I mean, that would have been a cool thing to experience, but glad I didn't have to. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, but I mean, it, it, it offers a really cool opportunity for, I think, the, the common fan to get to know players, uh, young players that are getting drafted, because I think that might be one of the biggest things you can poke at when it comes to the draft process for baseball is like, well, I, I they drafted this person, but I might not know who said person is. Whereas like if we look at NFL NBA, you do know them uh, in most any round. So I think that that's going to be really cool. Um, and being a, a player drafted out of high school, I, I just think that that could be really tremendous in, in helping players like yourself get yeah. higher slots. Yeah, I, I feel like 60 games is kind of a lot, like for a showcase type deal. Yeah. You know I, mean? I feel like a combine kind of thing and maybe a week of games like the area code games or something, because if you can't, showcase what makes you a good baseball player in a week <laughs> at a really bad week it's I mean because you're gonna you're gonna be coming off of a high school season and your body's not built to withstand 60 games you haven't been training for that kind of load like the college load and uh put that on kids I feel like there might be a little bit of injury and it's yeah. definitely like pitch counts with like those top tier pitchers and stuff 
because I don't know, but it's a cool idea. I, I never heard of that. Yeah, uh, they implemented it uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure you're aware of the, the cuts that they made uh, in the minor league systems to cut down, I think, from 160 to 120 teams in the minor leagues. And that's part of it. They, they cut those teams in part to start this MLB draft league. That's cool, though. I think, yeah. that's, I think it'll be beneficial once people get accustomed to it. First year I, might be rough for guys, but once you know you have that coming up, you're going you're gonna to be ready for it. Yeah, most definitely. And especially with the MLB going towards that, we want everybody to be super young and super team controlled contracts. If they can get you even younger and get you better younger, then I, I mean, that's, that's going to be beneficial for teams and for players too. Um, moving on, Cub, I'll kick it to you for the next question. Yeah, uh, this, this, is, this also goes with that. I was curious, like, when did you know, hey, maybe I could go pro? When did it like hit you? Like, what well, I could go pro, like, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's a weird, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's got a different story. Cause I was just curious yeah. what yours was. Well, and especially with like, and it, it, I'm sure every, every reporter, every podcast asks you about being the dual sport athlete and why'd you give up basketball and stuff like that. So I think yeah. this is kind of a cool question. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was always like the dual sport thing. It was always going to be like whichever sport I saw myself going further in. And I mean, after it was like, Probably my junior year summer, I didn't have an offer in basketball or baseball. Just talked to a lot of schools, a lot of a lot of nibbles, but nobody really bit. So after my uh, area code games, I actually got I got invited and I made the team and I played pretty well. And they started noticing some of the tools I had. I actually had like five or six meetings with advisors before I had a college picked out so I mean I think that's when I kind of knew or I kind of realized that this was like an actual possibility that like the pro route is something that is reachable kind of like it's it's kind of hard to like articulate but like when you're in the moment you're like oh like there's these teams here scouts whatever they're probably just like getting me on their radar but like to have an opportunity to get drafted out of high school and to go to a team and start your career is just unbelievable. And I, it was kind of, kind of stressing me out because I didn't even have a college picked out yet and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I had to deal with all that stuff. And I just wish it worked in reverse order like everybody else. But for me, I was kind of a late, late on the scene. So I kind of got reverse order, but it was, it was cool. It was really, really interesting. And, being able to work through that with my mom was was awesome. How long did how long was the decision to make like I'm going to go pro when you got drafted and after you committed to Miami? Did you did you lean at all towards going to Miami? I definitely was highly considering going to Miami. It wasn't like oh if I get drafted I'm going, but like I wanted to be in a situation where I knew that I was in the best place for me to be to develop because I knew I had some room to grow as a player and I knew I needed to get reps. And I heard too many horror stories about my friends going to colleges and not performing in the fall and then they don't play in the spring. And that's just not what I needed. And on top of it, I knew a pro system would have better, more hands-on coaches because that's their job is to develop, me, you know, like develop, you know, like that's yeah. literally what they're there for. And they, invested money into me so I knew they weren't just going to throw me to the side like a college team could that needed to win so those were just kind of some of my thoughts going into it but it was definitely more than that and it took me it took me quite some time to make the decision yeah I mean it, you you picked a sport too that might be the most confusing sport to go <laughs> pro in right when you think yeah. about all of the the hoops and and all of the, the uh, levels you have to climb through to get to the actual pros, like being a draft pick is a phenomenal accomplishment, but it doesn't always guarantee anything, which, which sucks. Uh, yeah. But, um, but I mean, you, you definitely pick the, uh, the, the most confusing one, I guess, I guess is all, what I'll say. Yeah. Uh, now, when, when um, you talk about uh, going pro and them having those, um, having those, things for you to develop, right? Having those resources. 
Um, we've talked on this show a couple different times about building velocity as a pitcher, but we haven't yet had the conversation about building power as a hitter. Uh, now I know that's one of the things that you've been working on is, is developing your power to all fields. Can you talk about what that exactly entails? Uh, maybe for like a younger hitter who's trying to do it uh, or for a guy who plays soul pitch softball like me. Just eat. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I did, I have gained a lot of weight since high school. I definitely put on muscle. So that's helped, but I would say, I don't know. It's everybody swings different and getting the pro ball kind of was a pretty big eye opener. Cause there's some guys that want everybody to hit the same. And then there's some guys that know that everybody has a different swing and you got to do what works for you and you got to feel comfortable at the plate because you could have great mechanics, but not feel comfortable at the plate and then just never make any solid contact. So, I mean, putting myself in a position to be able to drive balls was kind of my biggest thing because once I added strength, the ball comes up a little hotter regardless and just making sure to not be hesitant and really I don't know, use my levers and use, use what was God given and be able to drive baseballs. And I've definitely worked with all of our main coordinators and analytics team and all that stuff, all the stuff that like, I can't really spew out like numbers wise. Yeah. But again, b- baseball is difficult to even talk about at, at some yeah. point when, when you really get going on some of the analytics and the uh, saber metrics and whatnot, it, it is difficult to communicate. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. And my first year they tried to, throw all these numbers at me and I was like yeah sure I don't know what any of this means like they would tell me stuff like you're something something is low like speed wise and I was like all right cool like how do I don't know how to fix it like right I'm swinging as hard as I can <laughs> so I mean it was just kind of a process to really get up to speed with all the analytics and I felt like once my I was comfortable with my swing and once I was doing doing more like I don't know fluid motions it kind of cleaned up a lot of my analytics along with so it kind of like killed two birds with one stone yeah I mean 2019 was a really successful season for you and I, I, would, I would assume a lot of that numbers being thrown at you was, was part of that uh what was it a, a, a OPS over 900 which is you know elite by all standards um and something else that I thought was really interesting is you're 70 you're younger than 70 percent of the single a like all players in the single a level you were 70 percent younger than 70 percent of them see statistics don't always compute in my head either brennan uh and and still you performed in the the top percentiles of all of of uh, all hitting categories so interesting stuff (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah, (laughs) big stats guy when it comes to baseball (laughs) this guy just drools i i do i do rules brennan i read that you didn't even know what a two-seamer does when you first got into pro ball it's pretty embarrassing i had a lot of baseball to learn because don't worry because in chicago brendan we have a quarterback who didn't know what a hard count was when he was drafted so it's okay (laughs) (laughs) i was just curious what do you how do you adjust to different pitches yeah i mean i had to learn that the hard way no i'm just kidding you just you have to sit fastball you have to sit on one area one because you can't cover the whole plate i learned that the hard way trying to hit everything not like balls but like even even strikes in the zone you can't hit every pitch hard so you got to have a plan and you have to stick with it and I think that's part of the maturing aspect of baseball and having an approach at the plate and sticking with it honestly so I mean yeah that that was kind of the biggest thing for me this past year and uh at site b in south bend again was uh, really sticking to an approach against those higher level pitchers and trying to trying to do the, drive the ball and do damage. I, I thought it was hilarious when you said when I read that I'm like he doesn't know what a two seamer does and he's <laughs> trapping the pros. That's more of like, that's a better example sauce would be uh, Brett Favre not knowing what a dime defense is. <laughs> yes, well, yeah, that. or think nickel, nickel, great. nickel, nickel package. Nickel, Sorry, but, yeah, yeah. You're in high school. How many guys throw a good two seamer? Probably right. none of them. Probably well, especially them. at the, the major league level where we're seeing frisbees now. Yeah. Well, yeah. But like, even if they're throwing two seams, they're not moving enough to where I even like acknowledge them. Yeah. 
So it was never like, oh, he's throwing a fastball. That's their right. that's their that's their only fastball. It's just the two seam. Yeah, they're, they're throwing a fastball. Yeah. At the high school it's level, the two seam could really just be a four seam with a little bit of run. Yeah, or yeah. the cut and hit, or yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think it's interesting. And well, and as you climb through the ranks, I think that the movement starts to get a little bit nastier and nastier. And uh, and learning that has to be tremendously difficult. And I, I probably couldn't do it. So uh, I guess kudos <laughs> to you. Um, you've been designated to South Bend. Are you anticipating this year a move to Tennessee? I'm ready for wherever they put me. I would I would love to start the year in Tennessee. But if I start a level lower than whatever i want to start somewhere and finish another regardless right i'll be moving i don't want to have a stagnant year i was going to be getting better and moving up well and it, it seems like by by most accounts the the goal for you at least at or, an organizational standpoint is 2022 the way the roster is shaping up right now where you know schwarber is unfortunately gone and uh it seems like happen and, and hayward are going to be there that left field spot seems to be yours for the taking at the moment yeah I mean I definitely have a little bit more to develop and I know they know that too but I'm ecstatic for the opportunity and I'm I'll be ready when they when they give me the call when when you hear a guy yelling at you from the left field bleachers uh, it, it could be well honestly it could be any number of people but it will most likely be me just remember yeah. today <laughs> Let me tell it you what a two you. seam does. Yeah, yes, exactly. I'll throw you a two seam. We'll play catch. Uh, uh, yeah, like Trout and the little kid on the. Yeah, you get it. You watch, totally watch, get it. watching like a few years. Brennan will be batting like eight hundred with two with uh, two seam fastballs. <laughs> yeah, ES, it seems ESPN right to will, me. ESPN will be like uh, Brennan Davis plays catch with a middle aged man. <laughs> <laughs> And, and they'll Headline. they'll play <laughs> they're gonna play the make a wish music behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That seems right. That seems right. Um okay. <laughs> Cub Cub had a, a wonderful question, and I think it's 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 a good one. You have a cameo account. Yes. Um what is the most interesting cameo request you've received? Um i am be honest, if they're, if they're kind of out there, I don't really do them. Okay. <laughs> like, exa- I need an example. Like, I really yeah, want to yeah. know. I did have somebody that um, was kind of upset at their, like, parents or something, like some kid or something, was like, hey, I'm a huge Cubs fan. My family loves the Cubs. Can you tell my parents to get off my back? I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> Why didn't you like, do that? <laughs> I mean, I, I I did that one, but I didn't like make did, it see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It usually gives you like words to kind of like follow what they kind of want you to say. I was like, I kind of dumbed it back. I was like, hey, like, I don't, I don't even know what I said. I'm be honest. <laughs> your I improv skills, moment. your improv skills have to be great to do cameo. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's it's a good way to interact with people. I enjoy doing them. I just think it's funny how like people will pay five hundred dollars or more for like say Antonio Brown to like screw up in the middle and he doesn't redo it and you still paid for that crappy video. Yeah, and those he are just fun. Sends it regardless because he doesn't care. Yeah, it's just it's such a cool app though. Like you, it's it's a great gift. I think. Yeah, I and think so. Too. He's like our second person that's had a cameo, right, Sauce? And like I think they, so. get, they got weird ones too. I'm always, uh-huh. I'm just curious like what it says and stuff. Now, Cub, you didn't get me anything for Christmas. Uh, maybe a Brennan Davis cameo is something you can you can look into. Uh, uh, Brennan, you got my phone number. Just, just send, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. send you a video for yeah, the yeah. podcast, of course. For the podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. Okay, so there are being a young player. There's probably a ton of reporters that ask you a lot of the same questions because they might not know a ton about you yet. Um, so. If that is the case, do you have a question that you hate answering? Um, I don't. I don't think so because I I value everybody's questions, and if they ask more, it's kind of if they ask more than once. Like if I'm hearing it a lot, answering the same thing repeatedly kind of stinks. But yeah. like, it's 
it is what it is. People are interested, and if they want to know, they can. I'll tell them. That that's a great approach. Yeah, I, honestly, it's a great approach. Do you at all read what's written about you or like said about you wherever? I usually don't because I I don't really. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything to yeah. me. It doesn't. It's not going to get me to the big leagues if people are hyping me up or tearing me down. My mom does like to read it though, so if I see an article about me, I'll lob it to her. So if you have any questions, she's probably read everything. Okay. <laughs> we should have hit her up well, before. <laughs> hopefully, your mom doesn't hate this podcast because I think that would probably be pretty detrimental to the growth of our success. Um, <laughs> Blog coming soon for Mrs. Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Bad Yelp review. <laughs> yeah, one star would not recommend horrible podcasts. That's she what writes, I see on the horizon. She, she writes on the Apple ratings for us. Yeah, Apple ratings. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Um, I had something and it's gone. Um, let me look through these here notes. I can't believe I'm doing that. I got that. one for him. I got one for him. <laughs> I got one for him. Brennan, so you know a thing or two about goats, right? <laughs> so I'm curious, who's the goat of, like, just who's the goat? The goat? Yeah, who's the goat? Of baseball or basketball or just all the time? Whatever you feel confident with. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with the – a very politically correct answer and i'm gonna say my mom is the goat of everything <laughs> oh, oh this is good this is good good <laughs> no i i do have a ton of respect for my mom and i love everything she's done for me but sports let's get back to the real stuff i think it's probably uh I, it's probably jordan i'm a jordan jordan guy okay tiger woods charlie woods Yes. You can yes. already bet yes. on him. You can yeah. make actual bets for him to win uh, uh, majors in the future. I know. How, how long it's going to be for him to get his uh, PGA card or whatever it is. <laughs> how long until his first – it's pretty cool. I mean – It's a, it's a little weird. Yeah. I, guy has some pressure on him, but you, you'd expect that. Right. I'm surprised there's not bets on uh, Brownie Jr., we're looking at his Instagram DMs right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sup, so, okay, so 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 Jordan, you're a big Jordan guy for for basketball. Um, yeah. Let's keep it in the outfield for yeah. baseball. Who's the greatest outfielder of all time? And it could be guys that transition to designated hitter later in their career. So, uh, like a Nelson Cruz would still be in play. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's tough. I. I don't want to be basic and say Mike Trout, but he's just done so many great things for it, so it long. Is, yeah, it's hard to go against that. Yeah. But I am a big Lorenzo Cain fan, but he's not the best ever. Very underrated, though. Very underrated. Uh, great defender. Yeah, probably Mike Trout. Just because he's just a flat-out baller, and he gets the job done every year. So let me ask you this, uh, because as the older that I get, I think it's more fun to hear these answers. Growing up, my favorite players were David Ortiz, Derek Lee, uh, and others, of course, Kerry Wood. When you were growing up, who were the players that you looked up to the most? I definitely had more basketball players that I looked up to than baseball players. But okay, Lorenzo Cain was kind of, the, kind of my guy growing up when he was on the Royals. He was a stud. And I, I just loved everything about the way he played the game. So that mm -hmm. was kind of got my guy. I wanted to say that I looked up to guys in, on the D-backs because I was from Arizona, but I just didn't because they just weren't good when I could understand baseball. Sure. <laughs> you missed that. It was earlier. We got yeah, to witness that. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, and the reason I ask that is, again, I think it's interesting. Like, I would say, like, again, David Ortiz, Kerry Lee, Kerry. Kerry wow. Lee? That Carrie sounds Lee. like a country Carrie singer. Wood. Yeah. Kerry Lee Carrie. is a country singer. Uh, but Kerry Wood. And then, you know, if you go five years older than me, you're thinking of, like, uh, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. and others. So, like, when I when I get to talk to people who are a little bit younger than me, asking who their yeah. favorite players are is, is always interesting. Honor is, yeah. Yeah, well, and like Cub would say Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter is one of his. You know, I don't, I don't get that, but go ahead. You know, no, I, I want. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who, who has, who has the coolest batting stance you've ever seen? 
because I'm just I'm fascinated by batting stances. I always have been. Coolest batting stance. Or who's someone you just like playing wiffle ball when you're a kid? You're like, oh, I'm so and so, and you'd always do that. Yeah. Um, that's that's tough. I definitely the one of those those old guys. I can't remember his name. The guy who had uh, you, oh, oh, Eucal- Kevin Euclid. Euclid, yeah, yeah. Well, Uxie, I he like got that. The craziest, craziest batting stance that I I can think of right now. I I really like the way. Bellinger swings the bat straight up, and then he just lets it eat. I like the way uh, Kent Griffey swings, but he's smooth, left. smooth. Why all does left, it? Why does lefties. it look better? Why yeah. does it look better when lefties swing? Lefties are just so much prettier to watch hit baseballs. And I don't get it. Like growing up, I, I'm a righty too, and I, I've never gotten like, how come they look cooler doing what I do? <laughs> it just feels better too. I, and then they can just start walking to the walking to first after they absolute mash one. Right. Yeah. I. Good for them. Yeah. They got lucky. <laughs> Great genetics. I think that's something yeah. they talk about nowadays. Built different. So speak, <laughs> yeah, true. Speaking of uh, trying to um, growing up and stuff, playing video games. You probably played MLB The Show growing up, and now you're playing as yourself. What's that like? <laughs> It was pretty cool when I saw they had a mode where there were some minor league guys on there. So, I mean, that was a that was kind of an eye-opener that it was kind of more real than just like – because you get in the minor leagues and you're kind of in the lull of the minor leagues and you're like, oh, it doesn't even really feel – I feel like college guys get more attention than like the minor leagues in most aspects of baseball. But when you see yourself on a video game, that's, that's kind of when you know you're, you're close. Well, and I've got your, your profile pulled up here, and uh, your character <laughs> doesn't look too far off from your actual likeness, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, 60 overall, terrible. 60 I know, overall, I think, I think that they're, 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 they're jipping you. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we're talking about power. They've got you on at minimum power from both sides of the plate. Uh, that just doesn't do it for me. Who seems probably the best on um, anyone in the game? <laughs> probably. <laughs> pitch recognition through the roof um now so it, i'm not sure if you are a video game guy but if if you are do you play as as yourself or do you still create a player um <laughs> i still i definitely create a player because those i can't play with those stats come on i need, a, <laughs> I need somebody who's gonna win <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, did you sense. go out did you go out and run and get that game as soon as it came out to like see yeah, if you were on there uh, i did just because it was cool. And yeah, it was something have to. fun to have. Yeah, you have to. Years from now, you could be like, let me dust off this PS4. Let me show you something. <laughs> let me show you something. Let me show you, you my prime. something. <laughs> you like, haven't... That's, just, that's just your my player. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I created a player, didn't do much work on him. This is what it is right here. Um, you haven't been there long, uh, but have you had a worst day in the minors yet? Like one where like the bus broke down, you had to eat PB and J's that were warm. Uh, yeah, we definitely did have a breakdown and we were far. I haven't had a ton of bad days. I've, I've been lucky, but we were on the road and we had to like pull over cause something was up. We ended up sitting out by like a gas station for I don't know, like two hours waiting for some, something like a repair guy or a new bus. I think it was a new bus. We had four hours to go still on our road trip. And this was overnight and we had to play the next day. So we got we got in at like 11 or 12 to whatever city we were going to. I think we were going to some part of Michigan. And... Um, our manager still had us had early work, have early work at two. So like there was, you just better have gotten sleep on that bus. Like at some point, cause we were, we were going and that was terrible because nobody slept well. That's yeah. Well, and, and you hear horror stories like that all the time. I, uh, I watch, a you, you do you watch Bauer bites. You watch the stuff that Trevor Bauer does on YouTube. I don't, but my buddy sends me funny, funny clips from it. Yeah. 
he uh, he asked a bunch of people at uh, spring training last year, like, what was your horror story from the minors? And all of them had something to do with a bus breaking down, waking up early the next day. Nolan Arenado had a really interesting one, too. But I, I, th- I think it's I think it's kind of funny. You know, you, you really pay your dues in the minor leagues. Yeah. Every, everybody's had it. It's, it's not easy. Nobody. I mean, except for Juan Soto, everybody has had to really pay their dues in the minor leagues. Yeah, probably Bryce Harper. <laughs> Mike Trout as well, but uh, Cub, do you yeah, have anything yeah. else for Brennan? Because yeah, I know yeah. I know you've got some fun ones stored away. I got one. I got one. So we've had a lot of guests on that are sponsored athletes, but we've never asked this question, and I kind of mad that we haven't. Like, what, what do you get? What, when does Under Armour send you stuff? And when they do, like, how great are these little care packages? Um, they send me. It's kind of like a by need basis. If I need something, I'll reach out and be like, hey, like, I need this, this, and this for this upcoming thing that I'm doing. Or, And then they definitely send you – they they definitely gear you up during spring training. And then off season, they definitely gear you up. And then they give you a little spending money yourself to go and, like, get some street wear, whatever you want to do with it, just, like, based on your contract. But – I mean, it's definitely nothing compared to big league, big league uh, sponsorship. Those guys get geared up. I mean, you're still getting stuff. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. the best I part. Can never complain about that. I, I actually am a really big fan of Under Armour. Yeah, I, uh, casual shoes, not so much, but their athletic wear, their clothes, and their baseball gear, I'm a, I'm a big fan of. It's tough to beat their athletic wear. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the rock collection that they have. I'm one of those guys in the gym. Um, I love, I love me. <laughs> What'd you say? Rock nation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But not Jay-Z. In the room. Yes. That's hardest, me. Yeah. Hardest worker in the room. That's me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, how many other, how many other of your teammates are, are sponsored athletes? As of right now, probably like four or five. So, so again, definitely built lucky different. to be a part of it. Yeah, built different. Did any built other different. brands reach out before you said, "All right, I'll go with Under Armour"? Yeah, there was some other. Um, I got to choose between Adidas, New Balance, and Under Armour. Couldn't get Nike to bite yet. I'll get them when I'm in the league. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Awesome stuff. We got to ask him food questions, Sauce. We do. We do. Have you? Okay. Have you been to Chicago yet? I have. All right. Were you, were you carted around and then taken to somewhere nice where, where we can have a conversation about some Chicago food? I have been to a few local pizza places. All right. I, okay. It's a big... I'm going to describe what's next to it because I don't remember what the place is called. Okay. There's a big water tower and there's a big like rose painted on it. I think it's like Grimaldi's or something. Giordano's? Giordano's. Giordano's. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like he went to the Giordano's and Rosemont Cub. (laughs) Oh, wait, did you fly out of O'Hare? Yeah. That's why. That was Rosemont. He was in Rosemont. You were in Rosemont. Giordano's and Rosemont. Okay. So... By the sugar it's, factory and stuff? I have no idea. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so fun that we piece this together. Um, yeah. What are the thoughts on deep dish pizza? And it's okay. All, all answers are accepted here. Shame Big pizza good. guy. Big pizza guy. Okay. Grew up on the West Coast, and I'm accustomed to thin crusts. Yeah. So, I mean, deep dish was more like eating pasta. <laughs> It was like, it was, it's definitely not what I would like prefer in a pizza, but it's sure. definitely its own dish that I do enjoy. I, I have, I've grown up a bit, right? Over, over the, the course of this podcast, you can listen back to previous episodes and hear me roast people alive for not liking deep dish pizza. But I've started to understand that it's a lot. Like eating one slice yeah. of deep dish is a lot for the human body to like comprehend. They're like, what the Heavy. fuck is all this cheese? Heavy. <laughs> Brennan, let me, let me tell you something. It's for the tourists. Real Chicagoans like thin. This guy, 
like he said, he used to roast guests. I'm like, dude, Thin Crust is superior. I don't care what you say. Maybe a little Thin bit crust. Thin Crust is the move. No, you go to any party, no one's gonna have. Oh, well, where's the deep dish? You gotta set a night aside for deep dish. So you're gonna be yeah. like, all right, do I have a toilet readily available? <laughs> you're like, am I ready to get it all over my shirt? Probably. Am yeah. I wearing white? Yes. Yeah. So now yeah. we have to get thin. <laughs> Okay, it is good. Well, it is good. It's just like not what I think of when I think of pizza. Which is which is so fair. I completely yeah. understand it. Now, when you are uh, when you're in the big leagues, all I ask is that you let Cub and I take you to um, Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinder, which is on the north side. And it yep. is a phenomenal little spot. Uh, I would call it a hole in the wall, but really most people know about it. But it, too, is a different type of pizza it's almost like a pizza pot pie that's what it is that's the name sounds, of it sounds heavy <laughs> no it's not but it's so good it's, is it really? it's yeah it's a weird it's a weird thing to eat because they like put it in a bowl and then they flip it around and then it's like the bread is the bowl so basically it's like spaghetti without noodles wow sounds See? good i'm down it's, it's fire and it's it's in it's basically in a base on it's not a basement but it's like underneath some steps and people will wait three or four hours to get a table. Wow. Yeah, it's free. Sounds like they're doing well for themselves. And even th even through the pandemic, they're doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> sure, there was a lot of people that were ordering out. <laughs> yeah, you can get them frozen too. So they're they've been prepared for something have, like this. I have heard about that that you get the pizzas frozen and you take them somewhere. Yeah. Is that? That like a lot of places because I you definitely could, yeah you can do you that can with, send them cross country yeah you can do that with uh, Portillos too you guys have that in Arizona you do have Portillos I heard it's terrible it's I mean yeah it's not good <laughs> you gotta have I, I I've never had it in Arizona but we I would assume that there are a lot of uh, is it implants is that what they call people from up here that move down there no birds no birds no. got it no. that too. <laughs> Implants is very different. <laughs> oh, uh, you're talking about like people who moved down here permanently? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. I would, I would have to assume. The Cubs definitely have a strong fan base here because of well, you, uh, training and whatnot. Isn't, isn't your apartment like 20 minutes away from the spring training facility? Yeah. And my house I grew up in was 25 minutes. I, that, that's, yeah. It seems like you're in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um cub if if you have anything else now's the time i got nothing i got nothing Bre well brendan we want to thank you so much for for coming on and talking with us we appreciate you and, and giving up your your time tonight to talk to a couple goombas like us uh we love it we appreciate you uh also good luck this coming season if there is a season <laughs> uh thank you. You guys we'll be rooting for you. Awesome. All I it, got guys. is missed calls on my line, yeah. Never seen a pick up, right on time, yeah. If I don't call back, leave me alone. Please leave a message at the tone. All I got is missed calls on my line, yeah. Never seen a pick up, right on time, yeah.